Good evening. As usual, we will talk about the anime scripter and the release of 2.1.5. This uh, release is going to change a couple of things regarding the UI. Um, so as you may notice, there's been a major UI redesign uh, yet again. <laughs> Um, I changed a couple of things. I wanted to more uh, to be a more streamlined approach to the UI. I just wanted to look a bit more professional, not that compact uh, compared to the way it was. Um, I'm gonna go from chain and go all the way to about. I've added back the resize button now with the option to resize from zero to five to all the way to two X. Eventually, this will probably be an editable area where you can actually input, like, uh, say, 1.3x or you up to you. Uh, there are descriptions uh, which tell you uh, what everything does. Um, as far as that the UI goes, uh, I would also did some tooltips here. Resize settings is just so that people actually press on it because I have had a couple of issues with. Uh, uh, regarding false alarms and people with AMD GPUs trying to run NVIDIA related things. So maybe this will um, hopefully um, further encourage people to actually try to, to check the settings. Um, the duplicate wise, I haven't done anything to duplicate. Restore, I've added Anime Fixer Direct ML. Uh, this is for all, all the GPUs, so Intel GPUs, AMD GPUs should work all really well with this. Uh, interpolate wise, I've added enable slow motion, so you can now interpolate in slow motion. Basically, uh, the input say it's 24 FPS, it's gonna stay 24 FPS, but instead of being uh, say two seconds long, it will now be four seconds long, assuming a 2x interpolation. Uh, the interpolation factor is now editable. Uh, you can input like 10x if you wish, or 10, or it doesn't matter, the, the backend will uh, automatically detect that. Uh, you can also do fractional interpolation now, so 2.5. Assuming you have a um, a uh, 24 FPS clip or 23 976, if you interpolate by 2.5, it's going to be 60 FPS, for example. Uh, it should work with 2.3 or or 3.3, so any any value whatsoever. Um, I've removed the 128x. I believe it there was a 128x. There was no point in having it. It's probably overkill. Uh, but yeah, you can now put whatever value you wish here, as long as it's a number. Uh, you can also put an X at the end. Again, doesn't matter to you. Uh, I haven't added any new models, uh, basically because there's, there's no new model. Uh, potentially, I will add some NCNI models down the line for, for AMD users and likes. But um, yeah, uh, you can now slow-mo the clip and you can put any any interpolation factor you wish. Um, upscale wise, no new changes. Uh, the good old same models. I think I already mentioned I updated the RTMOSR version to V2. Um, sharpen, same thing. Run chain wise, uh, I think there was no changes here either. There's also the tip that uh, there was always there. I just moved one of the buttons, the extra tab you will see in just a second. Um, you may remember that there was a progress bar. I've upgraded it, so to say. Let's do an interpolate and let's showcase the slow motion at the same time. So say, let's do 2.5 uh, for the sake of it. So you're gonna run chain. It's gonna pre-render the video. Uh, so a new progress bar pops up and it shows you uh, exactly the FPS and whatnot. So as you may see, it's no longer the same length. It has been increased by 2.5x. Let's do a showcase with 2.2x. Uh, uh, run chain. It's gonna pre-render. And in just oh, opa. Um, so yeah, I did the cancel button too. Uh, let's not forget about that. And yeah, you can now cancel the process too. Let's not forget. Uh, about that because it was an issue in the previous release so doing 2x you see there's a small difference that's the 0.5x that was added which rounds it to 60 fps um so that's mainly the chain tab uh it has all of the settings that it used to have uh every i believe most of the bugs ui wise are now uh ironed out 
Um, so what else? In the extra tab, you may see it's now properly segmented. It has a couple of descriptions, so to say, just so the user exactly knows what that map implies. Uh, Utah Deal Video, again, it works just like it used to. Uh, AI video processing, generate 3D maps. So 3D maps wise, I've added the OG, so to say, uh, dev maps. Basically, uh, the way I was implementing it was a different version. Um, it was my own modifications that made it faster uh, on paper, basically. I've added a OG variant, uh, meaning just the actual paper-like implementation or the official implementation. It's not as robust uh, as the one found in TAS, but or the old models, uh, it's a bit more uh, finicky, but it will produce better quality. Let's do let's do exact depth map on this one. All right, it's working. It's not as fast as it used to be. I'm going to mention that the original paper implementation is about two to three times slower than my own variants, but it should provide a better quality overall. Uh, it's also in RGB, keep in mind. So if you want to do depth maps, you may have to, to make it a um, single, single channel. So you will have to make a grayscale probably. But it will provide better quality, no longer these really annoying um, artifacting aliasing, so to say, uh, which will produce better results, I guess, and more nice, uh, nicer results. It also works with the um, depth map quality. So all of these GTX GPUs all work with the depth map quality. So, uh, don't forget about that. Uh, do, do you know that the original paper or the AI itself was trained on 518 by 518? So any modifications you make here may result in some artifacts, but it generally provides better quality. I recommend the medium one. It's not too far from the original uh, mo uh, resolution the AI was trained on, and uh, it provides better results. We can also run a 518 by 518 for, for testing purposes. Uh, okay. So let's do the depth map. It's oh shit! Am I am I pre-rendering? I'm pre-rendering the depth map. <laughs> so let's cancel it. That's the nice aspect of it. So select this. Do an extra depth map. And it's working in the background. Awesome! It's showing now. The progress bar will be more accurate. It used to like go all the way to the half and then end abruptly it's will it will get closer to 100 so going from the beginning this is the difference between the two it's up to you to decide whichever you like but the with the minimum quality has um better data um maintenance i guess it's just uh, there's uh there's a hair follicle there so to say it kind of sees it it doesn't just become a blob up to you to see which one you like more i would suggest using the medium uh it generally looks better so i also added so there's the stilled map there's the depth anything v2 distilled is just a quote-unquote better version of the original paper uh you can try them both but from what i've seen distilled is generally producing better results it's really finicky about um Compression artifacting, like in my case, there's a bunch of compression artifacting. Uh, I would suggest probably upscaling or some way restore the clip. Maybe with TAS, you can do some restoring here with like uh, Anime Fixer or you name it. It's down to you. Try it out and let me know how it works. Uh, I moved. So you may remember there was a delete reader under file button. It will be it has been moved to the application settings i will also move this here probably if it fits but basically i flipped it so it no longer keeps the pre-rendered file only and only if it will only keep it only if you wish to keep it basically so don't delete the pre-rendered file uh, i'm not sure why i implemented it originally with delete uh delete the pre-rendered file uh, it should have deleted it automatically but now it will no longer generate uh pre-renders in 
um, <clears throat> and the TAS pre-renders folder in the project location. Toolbox, again, heavily modified. It looks better. It, there is a new function, I believe. Yeah, the pre-compose that was added. I fixed a couple of bugs with it. It will work better now, but I'm not sure if it works perfectly with, um, uh, what is it called? Custom custom plugins. I haven't tried that one yet. Let me know if it works, but maybe you will have to like pre-compose it yourself and then pre-compose it again. Uh, that's something that I will try down the line. Logstab. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the previous version, but yeah, now all of these logs are in here. I've added a copy logs to clipboard, so you can just copy it, go to Discord and just paste it in case if you have issues. And it's easier for me to, to um, basically debug it rather than having the user to go to the AS folder and whatnot. About that has been updated. I added a Twitter button. Uh, there's no longer this, the green badge. It's just now the, in the name. Um, quick tips, GPU compatibility, and a nice little call for action. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so this is as far as the UI goes. Uh, significance wise or UI wise, I believe it's much cleaner now and it's much more presentable. Uh, I'm prepping for a really, really big announcement in the following days and weeks, which will benefit heavily the U the TS user base. Um, if you have any issues, you can anytime just join the Discord server, it opens it up and yeah. Um, that's pretty much it in terms of the changes. Most of them were like the UI wise and just bug fixing. I want to make TAS stable before a more, um, before crowning it with even more uh, features. I do plan to add object detection down the line while in the AI video processing. So keep an eye out for that. Have a wonderful evening. Talk to you later.